All right, in this brief lecture, we're going to look at the three sects of Judaism and three different types of Judaism. And one reason this is important is because uh, Christians came out of Judaism. So Christianity as a religion is really an offshoot or was an offshoot of Judaism. So it's really important to look at these three groups and try and figure out which had the most influence. And we'll talk about that in the next slide. Uh, we know a little bit about, well, actually we know quite a bit about two of the sects. Uh, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Uh, one sect we don't know too much about except more and more information is coming out in terms of archaeology um, are the Essenes. And in terms of a primary text, uh, I've mentioned Josephus before. He was um, a Jewish historian living in the first century AD and he wrote a book called Antiquities. And in his um, book Antiquities, chapter 18, um, dash one, dash two, he talks a little bit about these three sects. So the first one he mentions are the Essenes, and then he mentions the Sadducees, and then he mentions the Pharisees. Um, and as you can see, he mentions here, he talks about them in uh, his book called The Jewish War, which you can look up all of these um, on the internet. Okay, what I've got here is a, um, a table of the three sects of Judaism. And as I said, uh, we're not going to spend too much time on this. But what I want you to think about as we're, we're comparing these three is which group seems like it would fall into the Christian category more than, more than the other ones. Uh, let's start looking at the Pharisees. Um, their name means separated ones. And what you've got here, and I'll sort of compare the, the, these two groups, the Pharisees and the Sadducees at the same time. So you've got the Pharisees meaning separated ones and you have the Sadducees meaning righteous ones. Uh, their name is coming come from a, a Hebrew word, tzedak, means, which means holy. Um, the Sadducees, so they viewed the Torah, which was the first five books of the Bible, as having the most authority when you look at the entire Old Testament. Now, this is different from the Pharisees, where they held that the entire Old Testament um, was very important. When you look at what they actually believed, you can see here that the Pharisees believed in miracles, angels. They also believed in um, immortality. Now, the Sadducees were just opposite of this. So they rejected miracles. They rejected the idea that there were angels, and they didn't believe in anything like immortality. Um, they also, the Pharisees, believed that there would be a future resurrection. Um, and as you can see here, the Sadducees denied this. One thing that um, was really important in terms of the, the differences between these two groups is that the Sadducees, the temple that we've been talking about, uh, which is uh, technically, called, it's technically called the Second Temple, um, this is where their power base was. This is in Jerusalem, and they ruled from that temple. Now, the Pharisees, these were a little different. So synagogues are just like Christian churches. They're small, they're small religious buildings. Um, the Pharisees were very popular in these buildings. And this is a, a really important difference because as we'll talk about in another lecture, the Romans come in and what they do is they destroy the temple. And in the process of destroying the temple, they really reduce the power of the Sadducees. Now you've got another group here, the Essenes. So as you saw, Josephus mentions them. We didn't know too much about the Essenes until the last century when, when quite a bit of archeology span was done. Um, the Essenes actually moved away and they moved out into the desert. As you can see here, they rejected the priesthood and the temple in Jerusalem. So they rejected both the Pharisee beliefs and the Sadducee beliefs. Um, they also lived communally, meaning they, they all moved into one group, they shared what they had, and so on. Now I ask you at the beginning of this slide to think about which, which group actually sounds more like a Christian group. And I hope you see that this is the Pharisees. Now. What this ultimately th means is that many of the Pharisees um, ended up joining Christianity. Not all, of course. Uh, probably the most famous Pharisee is Paul uh, from the New Testament. Okay, now I've got a little bit more uh, from Josephus here on the Jewish, uh, uh, the, from his Jewish wars on the Essenes. So this is important. Again, we know quite a bit about the Pharisees. We know quite a bit about the Sadducees but we didn't know very much about the Essenes and Josephus was one of the few written um, accounts we have of this particular group. So what I'd like you to do 
is I'll go through some of these points and I'd like you to do is to stop the video and then read through uh, this particular passage. Um, as you are looking through it before we stop, um, you can see that they're, they're Jews, they're Jewish people, and they esteem continence. Now what that means is sexual abstinence, so they're not having sex with, with other people, and they reject wedding, wedding, so they, they reject marriage, and um, they don't, as you can see here, they don't absolutely deny the goodness of marriage um, because they believe that you have to have marriage to have, to have children, but they didn't want their members in particular to be married. Um, so this is a, a really interesting group. And I, what I have in a series of slides here are some of the archeology span of these Essenes. So this is their main area. This is um, a site called Qumran, and you're looking at an overview of it. Now, what I'll do is I, I have a series of slides here that I'll take you into uh, more detail of these, these Essenes. So this is another overview of the site that I just showed you. And of course, what you can always do is stop the, the movie and then take a, a closer look at what's going on here. So what you have is the overview of the site, and then through here, um, you've got the, um, uh, the diagram for this. So if you look at here's number one, and number one on this is the aqu aqueduct entrance. And the aqueduct entrance is um, the water supply. So Qumran is up on a hill and they needed some way to store all of the water. Uh, so the aqueducts brought it in and then they had all these cisterns, as you can see. So number two is a cistern here. Um, you've got various reservoirs for water, so obviously water is very important. And you can see how all of these are connected through these various tunnels and, and pools. Um, probably one of the more interesting rooms of this particular site is the scriptorum. And script is a Latin word, it means to write. So scripto means I write. So the scriptorium is where these people wrote their books. and from all of these archeological finds, we know that they wrote quite a bit. So let me just show you a close up of this. So this building here is a scriptorum, a scriptorium. So we know that it was a scriptorium because they found a bunch of ink wells and uh, writing pens and so on. So this is the dining room. And what, what I should have put on this picture is a little uh, measurement so you could tell how big it is. But what you can see here, are people in the background. So you can sort of see how large this room is compared to them. Um, the Essenes were very big on ritual baptism. So what you've got here is a series of steps leading down into a pool. And then what they would do is they would direct water into these and they would baptize themselves. Uh, here's another example of this, where you can see the stairs leading down. This entire thing would be filled with water. Um, here's one of the cisterns, and again, there's no scale here, but if you look up here, you can see the size of the people compared to the size of the cistern. So a cistern, again, is where they would be storing all of their water. Here's the cemetery. There's some really interesting archaeological uh, work being done on the cemeteries. It was assumed that the Essenes were almost primarily men, but as they were going through the cemetery, they discovered um, some uh, bodies of females. So we're not quite sure what the women were doing there. We're not quite sure if they were living um, at Qumran, um, but there's some interesting material coming out of this particular site that people are still working on today. Now, some of the most interesting things that come out of this particular area are um, the scrolls. So these are called the Dead Sea Scrolls. And what the uh, people living in Qumran ended up doing is taking these the scrolls that they were writing in the scriptorium and then hiding them in these caves. And all of these caves are numbered. So as you can see down here, uh, this particular cave is cave one. And they found a, a large number of texts, which um, if you look online, look up the Dead Sea Scrolls, you can read some of these. So here's an, another cave, uh, cave number four. Here's another one, cave number six. And almost certainly there's more of these caves out there that haven't been discovered yet. Uh, this is cave 11. And what I want you to do at the end of this lecture is to um, watch a video that I have 
talking a little bit about these particular caves. And what I'll do is I will insert a tag um, and I will put it in the upper part, upper left of your screen. And then you can watch that when you get a chance.